Hi everyone. Here's the depth of field simulator that I've asked you to go to at dofsimulator.net. This is a really neat online um, app that we can simulate exactly what the aperture priority on a camera would be doing. So just to show you a little bit about this uh, simulator. We do not need to activate these advanced features here. So having it set to basic, you can decide if you want it to be metric or imperial. I'm going to leave it on metric just because I think you guys are probably more used to that. You can change who your model is. So if you want to have a woman or a man or a girl or a boy or I don't really care. You can also change your background, Paris, church, city, mountains, whatever. I'm just leaving it as is. And you can change it to be a portrait picture or a landscape. And I'm going to leave it on landscape. Your camera, really neat thing about this whole camera model thing right here is that you can actually set it to the exact camera that we're using. So we're using uh, Canon and our camera model, they're either T3s or T6s. Uh, they're basically the same thing. So they're a Canon Rebel. Let me see if I can find the darn thing. Here it is, T3 or the T6, and the controls are basically exactly the same on them. Those of you that have your own cameras, go ahead and put your own in. Basically, what it's doing is it's just telling us if you have a full frame sensor or if you have a crop sensor, and all of ours are crop sensors. Now, for lens, our default lens, the Canon 18 to 55 mil, is not actually part of this list, so we're going to keep it in the default. But let's just start off uh, and put our focal length, we're going to zoom right out to uh, about that 18 mark where would be fully zoomed out as to what you would see okay and uh, you can see how it would look like with our model and the city of Paris behind it and now we're going to change the aperture so the lowest aperture that we have on that particular lens because it is based on the lens is 3.5 and so you can see that if I was using an aperture of 3.5 as to how clear my model is and to how clear my background is. Now, that's really quite clear. And so normally you would be thinking, but in the last video, Ms. Wood just said that when you have a low f-stop, your background blurs out. And yet here we've set it and we've got a low f-stop and our background isn't really all that blurry. So what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you, there's a couple of other things that are going on in this photo, and that's what I alluded to in my prior video, is that we have to pay attention, how close are we to our model? So if our model is far away from us, then we're not going to see the depth of field uh, turn blurry as easily. If our model is close to us, then we can actually see that blurring out a little bit more. So right now on this particular one, if you look right here, how far away is the model? Well, she's three meters away from me. And I'm gonna show you one other thing that's on this as well. We have this guide right here at the bottom and you see I can move my model further away. So we can really put her a long ways away or I can move her closer. And so if I move her closer, and closer and closer, what you should be seeing is that the background is actually getting a little bit blurry. So look at the difference here when she is half a meter in front of me or when she is three meters in front of me. And you can see that at half a meter, look at how the blurriness of that photo is starting to blur out in the background. So the distance between your camera and your model or your object that you're taking a photograph of is also very important. The closer you are to your model, the more you will see that background blur out or the more shallow your depth of field will become. Now there's one more factor. And that other factor is, what is our focal length on our lens? So right now we were using the widest focal length that that lens had on it, which was around that 18 millimeter mark. Your lens, that one that we use most of the time, is an 18 to 55. So if I were to take this up to 55, look at how blurry the background is getting now. 
And I'll just move her even further away because of course we're way too close to her now that we've zoomed in. But notice already the background, how blurry it is. And I can move her now out to about that three meter mark and see how the background has blurred. So here's the difference between the background as we change our focal length. Look how the background is coming into focus. We haven't touched the aperture. We haven't touched how far away she is from us. As I take and I change my focal length, you can see that it gets blurrier and blurrier and blurrier and blurrier. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set my focal length at 50. And the reason I'm going to use 50 is because this is the standard focal length that we would use if we were taking a portrait of someone. Uh, focal length of 50 uh, keeps the shape of the face natural. When you start to use really wide lenses or really uh, narrow lenses that are zoomed in, the shape of the face starts to distort and it either gets narrow or it gets wider. But at a 50 mil, which is equivalent of an 81. Uh, and so 50 mil on a crop sensor or an 81 equivalent on the full frame. And uh, watch what happens now. So I'm going to move my model back because she's way too close to me. I'm going to leave her at that three meters. And so now look at how blurry the f-stop is. Watch what happens now if I were to change my f-stop. So three and a half versus four, versus five, six, versus eight, versus 11, versus 16. Notice that background is getting clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. So if you're taking a landscape photo and you even had someone posing in your landscape, you probably want the background to still be clear. If it's a person, maybe they've got a lake behind them, mountains behind them, you would try and use an f-stop that is in those higher numbers. And then everything's going to be clear. As soon as you take that f-stop and you move it down and you're in those single digits, notice how we're getting a lot of that blurriness starting to form. This is probably the most disappointing part of the fact that schools are closed right now because this is the one thing out of the whole course that I really wish you would be able to practice. Um, it's just the one thing that takes our photography to that next level. And I've tried on my cell phone and I can't control aperture on my cell phone. I can control shutter speed, but I can't control aperture. So if any of you know that your camera on your cell phone can, will you please let me know, send me an email, or if you have an app on your phone that is a camera app that allows you to control that when you're taking a photograph, please let me know. Uh, the only thing that I can see is that those little filters and modes that we have on our cell phone cameras, like uh, focusing for, you know, the scene menu for food focusing or selective focusing, it's kind of doing it automatically but it's not really true to how aperture priority really works. I hope that that has explained a little bit about how we can control the depth of field uh, with all three of those things by zooming in or out of our photograph, by changing our aperture to a small f-stop or a larger f-stop, and of course by changing also the distance of how far we are away from our model.